Adeline and Ben Zark stood in close proximity, their bodies nearly touching, enveloped in a thick silence. Ben Zark's breath brushed against Adeline's skin, and his intense gaze locked onto hers. Adeline felt a rush of heat to her cheeks, her heart racing, as she reluctantly withdrew from his embrace. I... I'm surprised. I didn't expect you to suddenly open your eyes. By the way, why did you sleep on the floor? Adeline's voice wavered slightly as she lightly tapped his shoulder, pushing him away. Ben Zark met her gaze in silence, his hand resting where she had touched him. Adele, he spoke softly, his voice carrying a hint of warmth as he addressed her, his fingers grazing his shoulder where Adeline had tapped. Yes, Adeline replied slowly, meeting his eyes once more. Do you know anything about Hella Alton? Benzark's question sent a shiver down Adeline's spine, her body tensing at the mention of that name. She struggled to maintain her composure, her purple eyes widening in disbelief. However, she quickly regained her composure. Hella. Alton? I wonder, who is that? Adeline responded, her voice cool and detached, masking any hint of recognition. She swiftly rose from the floor, putting distance between them. You don't know? Benzark's surprise was evident as he raised his gaze to meet hers. I don't. It's my first time hearing that name, Adeline asserted, her tone growing colder, a clear warning not to pursue the topic further. With a deliberate turn, she faced the wall, signaling her desire to avoid any further discussion on the matter. Ah, um, Adele, Benzark called out, instantly rising from his seat as he noticed her distress. He felt a pang of guilt for upsetting her. Ray, I need some water. I feel sick to my stomach. Adeline's voice was serious and low, barely concealing the turmoil of emotions within her. She struggled to maintain her facade of strength, turning away from Ben Zark to shield her face from his view. Can you go get some for me? Adeline's request was hesitant, her reluctance evident as she avoided facing him, fearing he might discern her true feelings from her expression. Cold water would be best, she added slowly, her voice betraying her inner turmoil. All right, Ben Zark replied quietly, unable to find the right words to comfort her. With a heavy sigh, he turned to leave the room, his heart weighed down by Adeline's distress. As he departed to fetch water, Adeline sank onto the bed, her emotions threatening to overwhelm her. She fought back tears, her fists clenched tightly on her thighs, consumed by thoughts of Benzark's inquiry about Hella Alton. How much did he know, and how did he come to know it? Adeline understood that in her past life, Ray's encounter with Hella occurred much later than the present moment. Was this a consequence of her altering the course of history? Adeline anticipated that Ben Zark might delve into investigating Hella upon his return to the Duke's mansion. She recalled with a heavy heart how Hella's arrival in her past life had heralded disaster, stripping Adeline of everything she held dear. Hella was cunning, adept at manipulating circumstances to her advantage. Adeline buried her face in her hands, grappling with a sense of sadness and hopelessness. She understood that Benzark's investigation could lead to Hella's return to the mansion, as she was the real prophet. Memories flooded her mind of Hella's previous machinations, leaving Adeline feeling vulnerable and powerless against her cunning adversary. Adeline's mind drifted back to the painful memories of Benzark's bond with Hella in their past life, recalling how Hella had cunningly lured Benzark away, leaving Adeline in desperate pursuit, yearning for his attention. The mere thought of Hella's potential return sent shivers down Adeline's spine, filling her with dread and apprehension. She feared that history would repeat itself, that Ben Zark would once again be swayed by Hella's influence, leaving Adeline to face his disappointment and cold indifference. The memory of Ben Zark's icy gaze haunted her, tormenting her with the possibility of reliving that heartbreak. Overwhelmed by the weight of her past traumas, Adeline's body trembled uncontrollably, her breaths coming in shallow gasps as she struggled to contain her rising panic. She felt suffocated, as if the weight of her memories was crushing her, rendering her immobile. Adeline's thoughts turned to the happiness she had found with Ben Zark in this lifetime, a stark contrast to their turbulent past. 
Yet the fear of reverting to their former selves loomed ominously over her, threatening to shatter the fragile happiness they had built together. As tears streamed down her cheeks, Adeline's laughter rang hollow, a bitter mockery of her own futile attempts to escape the shadows of her past. She had fought so hard to break free from the constraints of her previous life, transforming herself from a timid soul into a vibrant, outgoing woman. Yet, she couldn't shake the feeling that her fate was predetermined, that her efforts to change the course of destiny were in vain. With a heavy heart, Adeline acknowledged the painful truth. Perhaps she was destined to repeat the mistakes of her past, condemned to endure the same heartache and loss all over again. Meanwhile, in the corridor outside, Ben Zark proceeded with slow, deliberate steps, his mind consumed by troubling thoughts. He couldn't shake the feeling that Adeline had been lying to him. The change in her demeanor when he mentioned Hella Alton was too conspicuous to ignore. Her avoidance of eye contact and sudden shift in behavior raised red flags in Benzark's mind. Recalling his dream only added to his confusion. The vivid image of a woman with orange hair declaring herself as Hella Alton haunted him as he walked. In his dream, she promised to grant him the future he desired the resurrection of the heavenly realm. But could there be any truth to it? Was Hella Alton real, and if so, did that mean his dream held some semblance of reality? Lost in contemplation, Ben Zark couldn't help but wonder if his dream was merely a product of his imagination or if it hinted at an alternate reality. The uncertainty gnawed at him, fueling his suspicion that Adeline was hiding something from him. Lost in thought, Ben Zark reached for the doorknob and pushed the door open, stepping into the kitchen. His racing mind came to an abrupt halt as he was greeted by the sight of Wacken seated at the dining table, casually munching on an apple. Wacken glanced up at Ben Zark as the door creaked open, his expression curious yet unfazed by Ben Zark's sudden appearance. Ha! Huh? Captain, are you here to eat? Wacken's voice interrupted Ben Zark's thoughts as he entered the kitchen. Ben Zark approached the dining table where Wacken was seated, his curiosity piqued. Ah, uh, I just came here because Adele said she was thirsty, Ben Zark replied slowly, his gaze shifting towards the jug of water on the table. I didn't know you had a romantic side to you. Since you are here, you should take something back with you. The chef here makes great dishes. I want to bring him to the Duke's mansion. Wacken's words were interrupted by his enthusiastic endorsement of the chef's culinary skills. The table was adorned with a variety of dishes rice, spaghetti with prawns, cream-filled buns, salad, and apples but Ben Zark's focus remained on the cold water he sought. As Ben Zark poured himself a glass of water, he seized the opportunity to broach a sudden question with Wacken. Wacken, he began, his tone serious. Have you ever lied before? Wacken's expression shifted, registering mild displeasure at the unexpected inquiry. Nevertheless, he complied, admitting, Well, I do lie a lot, like when I'm about to get into an awkward situation, or when I want to hide something. Ben Zark seized on Wacken's admission, pressing for further clarification. When you want to hide something? He interjected, his interest piqued. Yes, I usually lie when I want to get out of a situation. For example, I lie that I'm sick when I want to fake illness to avoid studying, training, or working. Wacken explained casually, crossing his arms over his chest. Ben Zark absorbed Wacken's response with a nod of understanding. Though Wacken's admission may have seemed inconsequential, Ben Zark couldn't help but admire the stark contrast between Wacken's casual approach to deception and his own unwavering dedication to duty as a captain. Well, there are people like me who do that, but why are you asking? Is it about Adeline? Wacken's astute observation caught Ben Zark off guard, highlighting his transparency in the matter. It's not what you think. Ben Zark responded, his voice barely above a whisper, feeling a pang of embarrassment at the implication. Of course not. Come on, the water is going to get warm at this rate. Return to Adeline already so that I can finish eating. Wacken remarked casually, his attention shifting back to his meal as he urged Ben Zark to leave. Feeling slightly unsettled by Wacken's nonchalant dismissal, Ben Zark hesitated, his frustration simmering beneath the surface. 
Before he could protest, Wacken ushered him out of the kitchen, pushing him firmly and closing the door behind him with a resounding slam. I said that it's not. Benzark's protest fell on deaf ears as Wacken's teasing continued from behind the closed door, adding to Benzark's irritation. As he stood outside the kitchen, clutching the glass of water in his hand, Benzark couldn't help but feel a twinge of annoyance towards Wacken's antics. His thoughts turned inward, questioning whether his own leniency towards Wacken had inadvertently encouraged such behavior. That guy, he just does whatever he wants these days. Have I been too kind to him? Ben Zark mused, his gaze lingering on the closed door of the kitchen, contemplating the dynamics of their relationship. As Ben Zark made his way back to the room, a wave of worry washed over him. What was he even supposed to talk to Adeline about? The ease with which she hid her emotions puzzled him, yet her distress was palpable. He resolved to refrain from probing further. There had to be a valid reason for Adeline's deception and Ben Zark didn't want to push her away or risk her becoming the Adeline he had seen in his dreams, a version of her he dreaded encountering. Recalling that haunting vision of Adeline, he shuddered at the thought of her suffering. He couldn't bear to witness her transformation into that tormented figure. With a heavy heart, he let out a sigh, deciding to give Adeline the space she needed. Perhaps one day, she would confide in him of her own accord and then they could address whatever troubled her together. As the morning sun filtered through the round glass window, casting a warm glow upon the room, Adeline lay motionless upon the bed, cocooned in a veil of swirling thoughts. It had been mere minutes since Ben Zark had left to fetch water, yet in that short span of time, her mind had become a tumultuous sea of emotions. With a heavy heart, she contemplated the revelation that had shaken the foundation of her reality. Ben Zark had discovered Hela. The weight of this newfound knowledge bore down upon her like a leaden blanket, enveloping her in a shroud of melancholy. Despite the radiant beams of sunlight that bathed the room in golden hues, darkness lingered within the recesses of her mind. She struggled to make sense of it all, grappling with the sudden unraveling of the seemingly unbreakable bond she shared with Ben Zark. It felt as though the very fabric of their connection was fraying at the seams, threatening to collapse under the weight of this new revelation. Adeline's thoughts raced, each scenario more harrowing than the last. How had Hella managed to infiltrate their lives so insidiously? Was it mere coincidence, or had fate conspired to unravel the fragile threads of her existence? With a heavy sigh she draped her arm over her eyes, seeking solace in the darkness behind closed lids. Was it possible that she had been oblivious to Hella's presence all along? Or had her memories been tampered with, obscured by the machinations of fate? The room bathed in the ethereal glow of morning light, yet Adeline remained ensconced in the shadows of her own mind. With each passing moment, the light crept closer, casting its illuminating gaze upon her prone form. But within the depths of her soul, a tempest raged, threatening to consume her fragile sense of equilibrium. For since the moment Benzark had unearthed the truth about Hela, Adeline knew that it was only a matter of time before he would uncover her whereabouts. And what then? What fate awaited her in the wake of this revelation? Would she once again find herself confined within the suffocating confines of the Black Tower, imprisoned by forces beyond her control? The memory of her previous incarceration flooded her mind, a torrent of loneliness and despair that threatened to engulf her. Yet amidst the darkness, a flicker of hope remained, a small ember of resilience that refused to be extinguished. The weight of realization bore down upon Adeline with an intensity that threatened to suffocate her. Not only had she been ensnared in the intricate web of Hela's deception, but she had unwittingly played a role in perpetuating the facade. The gravity of her actions weighed heavily upon her conscience, casting a pall of uncertainty over her already tumultuous existence. As she grappled with the implications of her deceit, Adeline couldn't shake the haunting echoes of a cautionary tale that had been woven into the fabric of her consciousness, the story of the shepherd and the wolf. In that fateful parable, the shepherd's mendacity had led to his own demise, a tragic end wrought by the consequences of his lies. Adeline couldn't help but draw parallels between her own situation and that of the ill-fated shepherd. Like him, 
she had deceived those around her, weaving a tapestry of falsehoods that threatened to unravel in the harsh light of truth. The mere thought of Benzark's reaction to her deception sent shivers down her spine. She could envision the disdain and disbelief that would cloud his gaze, the palpable sense of betrayal that would hang heavy in the air. And what of Wacken and Aster, the stalwart companions who had stood by her side through thick and thin? Would they too turn their backs on her, their trust shattered by the revelation of her duplicity? Adeline's mind raced, each scenario more dire than the last. She knew that if she didn't act swiftly, the repercussions of her actions would be swift and unforgiving. Yet, in the midst of her turmoil, she found herself paralyzed by indecision. How could she undo the damage that had been wrought, when the very fabric of her reality had been torn asunder? A knock at the door shattered the suffocating silence, jolting Adeline from her reverie. For a fleeting moment, she hesitated her heart pounding in her chest as she braced herself for the inevitable confrontation that awaited her on the other side. With trembling hands, she rose to her feet, steeling herself for the tumultuous storm that lay ahead. Outside the threshold, Ben Zark stood with a cup of ice-cold water cradled in his hands, a silent sentinel poised at the precipice of uncertainty. Adele, can I enter? His voice, gentle yet imbued with a quiet reverence, floated through the closed door seeking her permission before intruding upon her sanctuary. Though he could have barged in unannounced, he chose instead to honor her space, a testament to the respect and consideration that underscored their dynamic. Within the confines of the room, Adeline's gaze drifted towards the source of the hesitant knocks, her heart fluttering with a mixture of trepidation and anticipation. Slowly, she rose from the bed, her movements deliberate as she granted Ben's arc permission to enter. Yes, come I in, she murmured softly, the words laden with unspoken complexities. As Ben Zark crossed the threshold, a palpable tension hung in the air, thick with the weight of unspoken truths and unresolved emotions. With measured steps, he approached her, extending the cup of water with a mixture of concern and apprehension etched upon his features. Adeline accepted the offering with a grateful nod, her facade of composure masking the storm of emotions raging within. Do you feel better now? His inquiry, tinged with genuine concern, pierced through the veil of silence that enveloped them. Yes. I apologize for the inconvenience. She replied softly, her voice a mere whisper amidst the echoing chambers of her mind. As she drank deeply from the cup, the frigid water soothing the parched recesses of her soul, Benzark's gaze remained fixed upon her, his eyes betraying a depth of emotion that words could not articulate. A fleeting moment passed between them, a silent exchange fraught with unspoken truths and unfulfilled desires. Adele Dash, he began, his voice a gentle caress upon the stillness of the room. Ray, her interjection, delivered in tandem with his own, sparked a moment of shared vulnerability, their gazes locking in a silent communion of souls. Do you want to speak first? Adeline's question, offered with a sweetness that belied the turmoil roiling within, hung in the air like a delicate wisp of smoke, waiting to be dissipated by the winds of fate. With a heavy sigh, Ben Zark acquiesced, his resolve faltering in the face of her unwavering gaze. It's not an important matter. You should speak first. He conceded, his words laden with a weight that belied their simplicity. And so, Adeline spoke, her words a carefully crafted tapestry of half-truths and evasions, woven with the intent to divert his attention from the tempest raging within her soul. As she recounted the tale of the siren and her impending quest, she clung to the cup of cold water like a lifeline, its frigid embrace offering solace amidst the storm. Why? His inquiry, punctuated by a note of genuine curiosity, pierced through the veil of her narrative, demanding answers that she was not yet prepared to provide. In order to prevent an accident. That's all I can say for now. She replied cryptically, her gaze fixed upon the water cup, unable to meet his probing stare. Are you not telling me the details again? His query, delivered with a quiet insistence, hung in the air like a heavy shroud, casting a pall of uncertainty over their fragile rapport. I can't right now. Her admission, offered with a mixture of resignation and regret, 
echoed within the cavernous expanse of the room, a silent plea for understanding amidst the chaos. In the flickering glow of the chandelier, a moment of silence descended upon them, the weight of unspoken truths hanging heavy in the air. And then, with a heavy sigh, Ben Zark broached the unspoken question that lingered between them like a specter in the night. I asked it also because of the prophecy? His words, laden with a quiet resignation, hung in the air, a stark reminder of the shadows that loomed on the horizon. Adeline recoiled, her features contorting with a mixture of anguish and remorse as she averted her gaze, unable to meet his penetrating stare. And in that fleeting moment of vulnerability, their bond was tested, its resilience stretched thin by the weight of unspoken fears and unfulfilled desires. You accepted it faster than I thought you would. Is it because you told me you'd do anything I wanted? Adeline's words hung in the air, laden with a weight that belied their simplicity, as she regarded Ben Zark with a mixture of surprise and curiosity. Yes, he replied, his tone resolute and unwavering. Yet, beneath the surface, a current of uncertainty simmered, his expression betraying a vulnerability that he dared not vocalize. As Adeline observed him, a whirlwind of conflicting emotions churned within her, her thoughts spiraling into a labyrinth of doubt and introspection. Why was he being so accommodating, so willing to acquiesce to her every whim, when he knew so little about her true nature? It was a question that had plagued her since the moment they had first crossed paths, a riddle without a discernible answer. Lost in the maelstrom of her own thoughts, Adeline scarcely noticed Benzark's approach, his presence registering only when he stood before her, his gaze fixed upon her with an intensity that made her squirm with discomfort. Adele? His voice, soft and gentle, pierced through the fog of her reverie, pulling her back from the brink of introspection. I'm sorry, I was distracted for a moment. She murmured, her cheeks flushing with embarrassment as she met his gaze. I see. Benzark's response was measured his eyes betraying a hint of concern as he sought to ease her discomfort. He didn't want her to feel uneasy in his presence, didn't want the weight of their shared history to overshadow the tentative rapport they had begun to forge. By the way, Wacken kept telling me to invite you for dinner. He continued, his words a gentle reminder of the bonds that tethered them together. As Adeline processed his invitation, a flicker of surprise danced across her features, her eyebrows arched in disbelief. Wacken told you to do that? I'm impressed, she remarked, her tone tinged with genuine surprise. It was a small gesture, yet it spoke volumes about the depths of their friendship and the extent to which Wacken valued her presence in their lives. There's nothing to be impressed about. He's just excited about foreign food, Ben Zark remarked, a tinge of displeasure coloring his tone as he recalled Wacken's exuberance at the prospect of unfamiliar culinary delights. The memory of Wacken's enthusiasm at the food table, his eyes alight with childlike wonder, elicited a faint sigh from Ben Zark, a testament to his weariness in the face of such exuberance. Wacken might come up with a bunch of food if we delay it even more. Let's go down and eat, Adeline declared, her voice tinged with urgency as she busied herself with tying her shoelaces. With a swift motion, she rose to her feet and made her way towards the door pausing only momentarily on the stairs as if struck by a sudden realization. Ah, and I'm planning to search for the siren in about three days, she announced, her words hanging in the air like a delicate wisp of smoke. Ben Zark listened intently, his brow furrowing with concern as he processed her declaration. All right, I'll help with the search, he replied slowly, his words laden with a quiet determination. He couldn't bear the thought of Adeline venturing into danger alone, her safety his paramount concern. Before Adeline could grasp the doorknob, however, she turned back towards him, her expression betraying a hint of melancholy. Her question, delivered with a sadistic edge, caught Ben Zark off guard, her words echoing in the cavernous expanse of the room. Why would you say that? He exclaimed, his voice laced with genuine confusion as he reached out towards her, his hand poised in midair. It's nothing. I just wanted to ask that. I apologize for asking a useless question. I'm going downstairs first. Adeline murmured, 
her embarrassment palpable as she hastily retreated through the doorway, leaving Ben Zark standing alone in the wake of her departure. As he watched her retreating figure, a pang of hurt pierced his heart, his hand falling limply to his side as he struggled to comprehend the tumult of emotions swirling within. The image of her departing form, her back turned to him in silent resignation, stirred memories of a distant past, a time when she had appeared to him in his dreams with a haunting familiarity. A hey, Adeline, he whispered softly, his voice barely audible above the din of his own thoughts. And with a heavy heart, he turned away, his gaze falling to the floor as he grappled with the ghosts of his past and the uncertainty of his future. For the past three days, their team has tirelessly scoured the islands and traversed the open sea in search of the elusive siren. As they sail through the vast expanse of water, the sky above them is a mixture of brilliant blue hues interspersed with billowy clouds, while seagulls gracefully glide around our ship. In the midst of this maritime pursuit, Ray and Wacken emerge from the depths, their heads breaking through the water's surface as they inhale deeply, momentarily closing their eyes to regain their composure. Wacken sports a crisp white swimsuit, in contrast to Benzark's sleek black attire. Their damp hair clings to their foreheads, evidence of their immersion in the sea. From atop the ship's roof, Adeline peers down at them, her hands cupped around her mouth to amplify her voice amidst the cacophony of splashes, the ship's rumble, and the cries of seagulls. Ray! Wacken! Did you find it? She calls out her voice strained by the distance and ambient noise. I'm sorry, Adeline, Wacken replies, his tone carrying a hint of regret. Nothing was found. Ben Zark chimes in from behind, his voice echoing across the deck. Adeline's expression falters, a subtle shadow of disappointment crossing her features. Clad in a flesh-toned top with puffy half-shoulders paired with a flowing black skirt and adorned with a sleek black choker. Her blonde locks sway gently in the breeze. Her gaze conveys a mix of concern and apprehension as she processes the news. While she had hoped for a different outcome, deep down, she anticipated this turn of events. Amidst the challenging quest to uncover the siren's elusive hideout, their team encountered considerable difficulty navigating the labyrinthine network of reefs and rocks where these mythical creatures are known to seek refuge. Maneuvering through such treacherous terrain proved to be a formidable task, as the ship continually adjusted its course in pursuit of any promising leads. The densely clustered islands and reefs presented an additional obstacle, complicating the search even further. Moreover, Adeline harbored little prior knowledge of siren lore, further hindering their efforts in this unfamiliar environment. Reflecting on her past experiences, Adeline couldn't help but recall how her opinions had often been disregarded in favor of Hella Elton's counsel, leaving her feeling marginalized and unheard. Interrupting her introspection, the captain sheepishly approached Adeline, seeking her attention. Um, I'm sorry for interrupting you, he began, his demeanor tinged with embarrassment. What's the matter? Adeline inquired, turning her head to face him, her focus shifting to the captain's urgent message. We are running out of magic stones, the captain confessed slowly, his words laden with concern. We can't keep sailing around aimlessly, he added, emphasizing the gravity of their dwindling resources. Understanding the implications of their predicament, Adeline made a decisive proclamation. I understand. It can't be helped. We will keep searching until tomorrow and head to Mavane Island if it doesn't bear fruit, she declared resolutely recognizing that time was of the essence. This ultimatum marked their final opportunity to locate the siren's lair. Failure to do so would necessitate a strategic retreat. Very well, the captain acquiesced, bowing respectfully in acknowledgement of her directive. With the decision made, the team concluded their search for the day, retiring to their respective quarters for much-needed rest. The ship now lay anchored amidst the tranquil waters, bathed in the ethereal glow of the full moon, casting an enchanting luminosity over the nocturnal seascape. As the door to Adeline's cabin gently creaked open aboard the ship, she emerged, lantern in hand, greeted by the serene stillness of the night. Surveying the deserted deck, she mused to herself, Everyone must be sleeping, right? 
A glance around confirmed her suspicion. The crew was likely nestled in their own quarters, oblivious to her nocturnal venture. Faced with the weight of urgency, Adeline hesitated momentarily, grappling with the inherent dangers of her impending actions. Yet, in this pivotal moment, she found herself bereft of alternatives. A profound sense of determination etched itself onto her countenance as she pressed forward towards the heart of the vessel, intent on invoking a potent enchantment, search magic. This formidable spell, once a daunting prospect, had been imparted to her by Ray, a testament to her progression in the arcane arts. Setting the spell book upon the deck, she pored over its pages until she found the incantation she sought, illuminated by the flickering glow of her lantern. Though initially daunting, the intricacies of the spell now seemed within her grasp, a testament to her growth and proficiency. With resolute conviction, Adeline steeled herself for the task ahead, drawing upon newfound confidence to wield the magic she once deemed beyond her reach. In this pivotal moment, she stood poised and determined, ready to harness the power of search magic in pursuit of their elusive quarry. Exhaling deeply, Adeline closed her eyes, a momentary flicker of doubt crossing her mind. Uncertainty lingered as she pondered the likelihood of success, yet amidst the uncertainty, she resolved to maintain unwavering focus. With deliberate care, she settled onto the floor, positioning the lantern beside her as she prepared to enact the ritual. Guided by the teachings of Ben Zark, she anchored herself in concentration, methodically executing each step of the intricate spellcasting process. A luminous aura of greenish-blue light began to radiate from her outstretched hand, gradually coalescing into a shimmering circle of arcane energy. As the magic surged forth, enveloping the ship in its ethereal embrace, Adeline felt a surge of exhilaration coursing through her veins. Meanwhile, Wacken lay nestled in the comfort of his cabin, oblivious to the unfolding spectacle. Suddenly jolted from his slumber by an inexplicable sensation, he cast a bewildered gaze around his surroundings, momentarily perplexed by the mysterious disturbance. Dismissing it as a fleeting anomaly, he resigned himself to the allure of sleep, cocooning himself beneath the covers once more, eager to succumb to its comforting embrace. In stark contrast, Adeline rose from her seat, her senses awash with disbelief and awe. The realization of her accomplishment dawned upon her, filling her with an overwhelming sense of triumph. I think. I did it! She exclaimed jubilantly, her hands raised skyward in a triumphant gesture. Overwhelmed by a wave of euphoria, she basked in the glow of her achievement, her heart brimming with indescribable joy. In the midst of her jubilation, Adeline couldn't help but marvel at the inexplicable turn of events. What do I do? I'm so happy! I really did it! How mysterious! It feels like my vision has expanded! She exclaimed, relishing the euphoria of her achievement. Though initially uncertain of her capabilities, she now found herself basking in the glow of disbelief and satisfaction. As she closed her eyes in deep concentration, Adeline's thoughts gravitated towards the elusive siren, her mind attuned to the subtle vibrations of magic permeating the air. In an instant, she felt an ethereal connection, as if the siren's presence lingered just beyond her grasp. Yet, as she opened her eyes, a cascade of memories flooded her consciousness, transporting her back to a pivotal moment in her past. Recollections of Benzark's stern admonition resurfaced, prompting her to contemplate the true meaning behind his prohibition of search magic. You will never use this magic. His words echoed in her mind, casting a shadow of doubt upon her newfound abilities. Pondering the implications of his decree, Adeline entertained the possibility that her latent powers may not have been intended for practical application. By the way, since when did I have a power like this? She pondered aloud, her brow furrowed in bewilderment. Standing amidst the tranquil expanse of the ship's deck, she grappled with the enigma of her newfound abilities, striving to decipher their origins and purpose. Despite her best efforts to unravel the mystery, Adeline found herself confronted by a profound sense of uncertainty. Well, whatever. Regardless, I succeeded, she declared triumphantly, her spirits buoyed by the reassurance of her accomplishment. Contemplating the impending inquiries of her companions, 
Adeline entertained various scenarios, pondering the most appropriate response. What a relief Ray and Wacken won't have to suffer tomorrow. On second thought, they will ask me how I found it out. Hmm, shall I just smile, maybe? She mused aloud, her thoughts drifting as she made her way back to her cabin, lantern in hand. Adeline remained oblivious to Benzark's silent observation from the ship's roof as she retreated to her cabin, lost in her thoughts. Meanwhile, Benzark grappled with a whirlwind of emotions, his surprise and disbelief palpable. Adele. He muttered her name, his voice barely audible above the gentle hum of the ship's engines. How was Adeline capable of using search magic? He pondered, his brow furrowed with suspicion. Despite his efforts to calm his racing thoughts, uncertainty gnawed at him. Search magic isn't something anyone can use. He reminded himself, struggling to reconcile Adeline's unexpected display of arcane prowess. As he mulled over the events of the previous night, Benzark's certainty wavered. Adeline's proficiency with magic defied conventional understanding, leaving him grappling with uncertainty. Moreover, what Adeline just used might not have been search magic. He conceded, his mind awash with conjecture. Clenching his fists in an attempt to steady his nerves, Ben Zark resolved to confront his doubts with a rational mindset. Yes, it must have been my mistake, he reasoned, his tone tinged with self-assurance as he sought solace in the semblance of certainty. With a resolute nod, he turned on his heel and made his way towards his quarters, his thoughts consumed by the enigma of Adeline's abilities. With the dawn of a new day, the ship bathed in the radiant glow of sunlight, the tranquil ambience punctuated by the melodic cries of seagulls overhead. As Wacken and Ben Zark converged upon the ship's library, Adeline awaited their arrival, resplendent in a charming frock adorned with a brown waist corset. Ben Zark, coincidentally attired in a green waistcoat over a crisp white shirt, mirrored her unwitting sartorial coordination. Standing poised with hands clasped in anticipation, Adeline's demeanor exuded a sense of purpose, her gaze unwavering as Wacken approached. As the discussions unfolded in the ship's library, Wacken wasted no time in posing the pressing question to Adeline. Did you figure out the siren's location? Adeline's response was swift and confident as she gestured towards a point on the map, asserting, it must be sleeping under this island. Perplexed by her apparent certainty, Wacken scratched his head in confusion. How do you know that? He inquired, hoping for a logical explanation. Adeline, however, offered a cryptic response with a playful chuckle, attributing her insight to intuition. Wacken's eyes widened in awe at her enigmatic demeanor. Wow, how mysterious. This must be the power of prophecy as well. He mused impressed by Adeline's seemingly supernatural abilities. But his curiosity persisted as he sought clarification. Adeline, considering the fact that it isn't reacting to us being so close to its lair, the siren must be still sleeping, right? Adeline's response was laced with a hint of sadistic amusement. I guess? Since nothing is happening. She remarked casually, her mind already wandering to the next phase of their plan. However, as the trio deliberated on their next course of action, Adeline found herself at a loss for ideas. Then, how are we going to wake up the sleeping siren? Wacken implored, his gaze fixed hopefully on Adeline. Lost in thought, Adeline pondered deeply, her hand resting thoughtfully on her chin. Suddenly, both she and Wacken turned their attention towards Ben's arc, silently pleading for his guidance. Why me? Ben Zark muttered incredulously, his frustration evident as he grappled with their expectations. Adeline interjected with a wistful sigh. I had a feeling Ray would know. While Wacken added, And Captain is a Dave a leader. Ben Zark's patience wore thin as he struggled to contain his exasperation. I'm sorry, but I don't know everything. He retorted tersely, feeling increasingly burdened by their reliance on him. Wacken, Seizing the opportunity to tease Ben Zark, remarked mockingly, I guess sometimes I feel like you're even less knowledgeable than me. Ben Zark clenched his fists in frustration, his teeth grinding in irritation at Wacken's jest. But before tensions could escalate further, 
Adeline interjected with a sudden burst of inspiration. Ah, I remembered. Let's destroy the siren's lair, she exclaimed, her eyes alight with enthusiasm as she unveiled her audacious plan. Wacken and Benzark stared at her in disbelief as she outlined her proposal. I'm saying that we should blow up the entire island since the bomb made from the orc's heart happens to be ready. There's no way it would keep sleeping if we blew up its lair, right? She suggested eagerly, brandishing the pouch containing the explosive device. Wacken's expression oscillated between astonishment and apprehension as he reached for the pouch, muttering under his breath. Seriously, Adele's extreme behavior sometimes. I still can't get used to it. Unfazed by Wacken's jest, Adeline retorted with a smirk. Shouldn't you be used to it by now? With the plan set in motion, Wacken prepared to embark on his mission, securing the pouch to his belt as he joked about abandoning him if things went awry. Well then, please relax until I'm back, he quipped before making his exit. Alone on the ship's roof, Wacken steeled himself for the daunting task ahead. Gazing down at the dark waters below, he took a deep breath and plunged into the depths below. As he descended into the murky abyss, his mind raced with trepidation and determination. It's darker than what I thought, he remarked to himself, his resolve unwavering despite the ominous surroundings. Compelled by necessity, he summoned forth his divine power, conjuring a magical light to guide his path through the shadowy depths. With a sense of purpose driving him forward, Wacken pressed on, scanning the underwater landscape for any sign of the slumbering siren. And then, as if emerging from a nightmare, he beheld the sight that confirmed their fears. The siren, sprawled amidst the rocky crags and reefs, its menacing presence looming large in the darkness. Oops. I think I found it. He muttered apprehensively, his heart pounding in his chest as he braced himself for the perilous task ahead. In the murky depths of the water, all Wacken could discern was the imposing figure of the enormous siren, its massive tentacles extending throughout the area. The magical blue light emanating from Wacken's device added an eerie ambience to the scene. Wow! It's really big! Wacken exclaimed, taking in the sight of the siren's sprawling tentacles. Aware of the urgency, Wacken knew he needed to act swiftly before the siren awakened. He carefully surveyed the area selecting a suitable location to place the bomb. Swimming forward, he approached the rock upon which the siren rested, strategically positioning the explosive within its confines. This should be good enough, right? He pondered, inspecting the placement of the bomb. Satisfied with his decision, he turned abruptly and began ascending towards the surface. With determination, he focused on preparing for the impending battle. Unbeknownst to Wacken, Bubbles began to form around the siren's body, signaling its awakening. In an instant, its piercing red eyes snapped open, dispelling any notion of slumber. The siren's tentacles began to undulate towards Wacken's direction, creating turbulent waves in the water. Sensing a disturbance, Wacken paused mid-swim, a sense of foreboding washing over him. Just felt something moving. He muttered to himself, his intuition hinting at impending danger. Though reluctant to acknowledge the truth, he braced himself for whatever challenges lay ahead. Unfortunately, Wacken's luck took a turn for the worse as he pivoted, only to be met with the chilling gaze of the siren, its crimson eyes fixated on him, while its massive tentacles reached menacingly in his direction. Paralyzed with fear, Wacken felt a cold shiver run down his spine, his visage contorting with a mixture of terror and astonishment. Damn it, wasn't IT asleep? He lamented internally, grappling with the shock of the siren's sudden awakening. Time seemed to stand still as the siren's tentacles began to encroach upon him, threatening to ensnare his entire being. Desperately, Wacken clutched onto one of the appendages, straining against its grasp in a futile attempt to stave off capture. Amidst his struggle, doubts plagued his mind. Had his employment of divine power triggered the siren's awakening? Regret gnawed at him knowing that he had underestimated the consequences of his actions. Alone and overwhelmed, he realized the futility of his predicament. Summoning his last ounce of strength, Wacken strained to tilt his head upward, emitting a strained grunt as he raised his free arm and snapped his fingers, 
conjuring a beacon of blue magic that ascended into the sky without interruption. This signal was his lifeline, a plea for aid directed towards Captain and his comrades, warning them of the imminent danger he faced at the hands of the awakened siren. Ben Zark and Adeline stood vigilantly atop the ship, their eyes trained on the undulating surface of the water below. An air of apprehension enveloped them, evident in the furrowed brows and tense expressions that adorned their faces. Minutes stretched into an eternity as they awaited Wacken's return, their concerns mounting with each passing moment. Their reverie was abruptly shattered as the sea erupted in a tumultuous display, sending plumes of water cascading into the air alongside a brilliant blue magical signal. What had begun as a modest beacon now expanded into a grand spectacle, engulfed in the spray of the ocean. Startled by the sudden commotion, both Benzark and Adeline instinctively recoiled from the epicenter of the disturbance. Adeline's mind raced with suspicion, her gaze fixed upon the burgeoning signal. Wait, could this mean? She ventured, her voice tinged with uncertainty. Benzark's features hardened with grim resolve as he pieced together the unfolding events. It looks like something went wrong. I think Wacken got caught by the siren, he declared his tone resolute despite the underlying worry that gnawed at him. Though anxiety threatened to overwhelm him, Ben Zark maintained a facade of composure, determined to confront the situation head-on. Adeline regarded him with a mixture of concern and admiration, her heart heavy with the weight of uncertainty. Together, they braced themselves for the trials ahead, their unwavering bond serving as a beacon of hope amidst the encroaching darkness. Adele, you should return to the CBI. Benzark's words rushed out in a flurry, his urgency palpable as he turned towards Adeline, only to halt mid-sentence. The sight that greeted him stole his breath away, Adeline's countenance frozen in a mask of shock, her features betraying the weight of the moment. It was as though she had retreated into the depths of her own mind, consumed by the burden of guilt and responsibility. Her eyes, devoid of their usual sparkle, remained fixed in a vacant stare, sending a chill down Benzark's spine. Concern etched deep lines upon his brow as he reached out to her, calling her name in a desperate attempt to pierce through the veil of her distress. Adele. His voice trembled with unease, his heart aching at the sight of her silent anguish. Yet, try as he might, Adeline remained unresponsive, her thoughts ensnared by the haunting specter of what-ifs and regrets. In the tumult of her mind, Adeline grappled with a revelation that threatened to shatter her resolve. What if destiny, that immutable force, could be transferred, passed from one soul to another like a curse? The memory of Maven's tragic demise loomed large, a stark reminder of her failed attempt to alter fate. Was it possible that Wacken now bore the burden of her choices, paying the ultimate price for her interference? The faces of the departed, both Maven and Wacken, flickered before her mind's eye, their silent accusations weighing heavily upon her soul. If the threads of destiny had indeed woven a path of death, then what fate awaited her in the wake of her actions? The thought lingered, ominous and unyielding, as Adeline grappled with the consequences of her choices amidst the uncertainty of the unknown. She found herself engulfed in a whirlwind of thoughts, the cacophony of her inner turmoil drowning out the world around her. It was Benzark's commanding voice that jolted her back to reality, his words cutting through the haze of her contemplation like a sharp blade. Get a grip, Adele! His voice reverberated with urgency, a stark reminder of the gravity of their situation. Startled, she turned towards him, her own voice faltering as she struggled to process the onslaught of emotions coursing through her. Arre! Her voice trembled with uncertainty her gaze darting between Benzark and the restless waters below. Concern etched deep furrows upon Benzark's brow as he peered into the abyss, his focus fixed on locating Wacken amidst the tumultuous sea. Seating himself upon the ship's floor, Benzark's posture betrayed the weight of their predicament, his solemn demeanor a testament to the gravity of their circumstances. Adeline's eyes followed his gaze, lingering upon Wacken's abandoned sword, a silent testament to the perilous journey that lay ahead. Adele, you should return to the cabin for now. There's nobody to protect you since Wacken got caught. Ben Zark urged, 
his words tinged with urgency as he sought to shield her from the dangers that lurked beyond the safety of the ship. Yet beneath his hurried facade, Adeline detected a glimmer of concern, a flicker of vulnerability that belied his stoic exterior. Ray, I'm not someone who always needs to be protected. I can also use magic. I can at least protect myself. Her voice rose with indignation, her frustration palpable as she asserted her own agency in the face of perceived weakness. Anger coursed through her veins, her cheeks flushing with defiance as she refused to be relegated to the role of a mere damsel in distress. That magic again. Benzark's retort was laced with a cold edge, his gaze fixed upon the swords with a steely resolve. Though his words were curt, Adeline sensed the underlying concern that lingered beneath his stoicism, a silent plea for her safety amidst the chaos that threatened to consume them all. A magic like that is completely useless. Why do you keep being so reckless? Benzark's words cut through the air like a blade, each syllable laced with anger and frustration as he directed his gaze squarely at Adeline. The weight of his disapproval bore down upon her, leaving her speechless and crestfallen. Adeline's features contorted with a mixture of shock and sorrow, her heart sinking at the harshness of Benzark's condemnation. For a fleeting moment, her eyes widened in disbelief before she lowered her gaze, her silence a poignant acknowledgement of the pain his words inflicted upon her. Do you want to get yourself killed or something? His voice rose to a crescendo, the force of his anger reverberating throughout the ship. Benzark's own tumultuous emotions threatened to overwhelm him his chest heaving with the intensity of his fury. Yet, amidst the tempest of his wrath, a flicker of confusion danced in his eyes, a silent question lingering in the depths of his soul. Duke Benzark. Adeline's voice, soft and measured, pierced through the tumult, drawing Benzark's attention like a beacon in the storm. Startled, he fell silent, his gaze locking onto hers with a mixture of surprise and wonder. Despite the pain wrought by his harsh words, Adeline's unwavering resolve remained unbroken, her willingness to confront him a testament to the strength of her character. In that moment of clarity, Ben Zark found himself grappling with a torrent of conflicting emotions, his anger dissipating like mist in the morning sun. As Adeline prepared to speak, he braced himself for the words that would follow a sense of anticipation mingling with the dawning realization that perhaps there was more to their exchange than met the eye. Do you remember what you told me before? Her words hung heavy in the air, each syllable tinged with a darkness that sent shivers down Benzark's spine. His heart clenched with a mixture of apprehension and guilt, a sense of foreboding settling over him like a suffocating cloak. You said you would grant me anything I asked for, and you said you would never get angry at me. Her voice wavered with emotion, her face obscured as she struggled to contain the torrent of tears threatening to spill forth. When she finally raised her head, Ben Zark was met with a sight that rendered him speechless. A mask of anguish etched upon her features, tears streaming down her cheeks like crystalline rivers. Everything you said to me was everything a lie. Her accusation pierced through the silence, each word a dagger to Ben Zark's heart. The weight of her pain bore down upon him, leaving him feeling utterly powerless in the face of her sorrow. He longed to offer solace, to reassure her that his intentions were pure, but his voice failed him, his tongue tied by the enormity of his own emotions. In that fragile moment of vulnerability, Ben Zark grappled with the realization that his actions had wounded her deeply, leaving behind scars that ran deeper than he could have ever imagined. His mind raced with a deluge of thoughts, each one a testament to the depth of his regret and remorse. Their intimate exchange was abruptly interrupted by the sudden upheaval in the waters below, the sight of Wacken ensnared in the siren's tendrils jolting them back to the grim reality of their predicament. Adeline's words, laced with a bitter resignation, echoed in Benzark's ears, a painful reminder of the rift that had formed between them in the wake of his harsh words. Go ahead and save Wacken. Adeline's voice carried a note of sadness, her back turned to him as she retreated into the shadows of her own despair. Though her expression remained veiled from his view, Ben Zark sensed the depth of her anguish, a silent plea for redemption amidst the chaos that threatened to consume them all. 
Yet, before he could utter a word in response, she vanished into the darkness, leaving him to grapple with the weight of his own remorse. Adele, I can't leave you alone. Despite the frostiness of her demeanor, Benzark's voice softened as he reached out to her once more, a flicker of hope igniting within him that she might yet relent and forgive him. I'm telling you to go already. Her words were laced with venom, delivered with such force that they cut through the air like a whip. Adeline's anger radiated from her like an inferno, her frustration and resentment palpable in every line of her face. Caught off guard by the intensity of her rage, Ben Zark recoiled momentarily, his own emotions roiling within him as he struggled to comprehend the depth of her fury. In that fleeting moment of clarity, he realized the gravity of his mistake, the folly of underestimating her strength and dismissing her contributions to their cause. All right. He acquiesced, his voice clipped and resigned as he turned away from her, his heart heavy with regret. With a heavy sigh, he directed his attention towards the crew of the ship, his resolve unwavering despite the turmoil that churned within him. Attention, everyone! He called out, his words carrying across the deck with the weight of authority. As he began to unbutton his coat, his actions spoke volumes, a silent testament to his commitment to their shared cause. The siren woke up earlier than expected. Everyone remembers that listening to the siren's song is dangerous, right? Go ahead and put your wax earplugs in. He commanded, his tone firm and authoritative as he sought to rally the crew to action. Though the specter of danger loomed large, Ben Zark remained steadfast in his resolve, determined to lead his comrades through the storm that lay ahead. As the urgency of the situation became apparent, the crew sprung into action with practiced efficiency, each member swiftly donning wax earplugs to safeguard themselves against the perilous allure of the siren's song. Adeline moved amongst them with a watchful eye, her expression a mix of apprehension and determination as she assessed the unfolding events. Meanwhile, Ben Zark, his countenance a mask of resolve, leapt into action without hesitation, his movements fluid and precise as he descended upon the siren's tentacles with a single-minded determination. With a deft stroke of his sword, he severed one of the monstrous appendages, the sound of its descent echoing across the water. In that moment, all traces of his earlier conflict with Adeline were forgotten, replaced by a singular focus, to vanquish the siren and ensure the safety of his comrades. Adeline, her heart pounding in her chest, watched from the safety of the ship, her concern for Ben Zark and the crew etched upon her features. Despite the lingering tension between them, a flicker of compassion stirred within her, a testament to the depth of her affection for him. She longed for their safe return, a silent prayer whispered in the recesses of her heart. In a decisive moment of clarity, Adeline's gaze shifted towards the shimmering blue magic stone cradled in her palm. It was a potent artifact, capable of amplifying magical power and storing spells for later use, a tool that held the potential to turn the tide of their desperate battle. With unwavering resolve, she resolved to harness its power, to contribute to their cause in her own unique way. With steady hands, Adeline focused her thoughts on the spell she wished to imbue within the magic stone, her determination unwavering as she prepared to unleash its formidable power. In this pivotal moment, she found solace in the knowledge that she, too, could make a difference, that her actions could tip the scales in their favor and lead them one step closer to victory. In the recesses of her mind, Adeline found herself transported back to a time when she stood alongside Ben Zark in the depths of the forest, the weight of the magic stone heavy in her grasp. Clad in her customary attire, she gazed down at the stone with a mixture of apprehension and uncertainty her mind awash with doubts regarding its efficacy. Do I just need to throw the magic stone? Her voice wavered with uncertainty, her eyes fixed upon the inert object clutched within her palm. The prospect of wielding such power filled her with both trepidation and curiosity. What if... There's nowhere to throw it. Her words hung in the air, a testament to the lingering doubts that plagued her mind. The forest seemed to close in around her, amplifying her sense of unease. Ben Zark, a stalwart figure in his black uniform and billowing cloak, stood before her with unwavering resolve, his serious countenance a reassuring anchor amidst her uncertainty. 
With a gesture of his hand, he summoned the magic stone into the air, the object hovering effortlessly before them. You don't need to worry about that. It would be a problem for ordinary people who don't have any mana. He reassured her, his voice steady and calm. In a display of mastery, he demonstrated the stone's potency, shattering it into countless shards with a mere thought. As the broken pieces of the magic stone danced in the air, Adeline was abruptly pulled back into the present, her memories fading into the background as she focused on the task at hand. With a renewed sense of purpose, she tightened her grip around the magic stone, her resolve steeled by the memory of Benzark's guidance. In that fleeting moment of clarity, she whispered a silent vow, a pledge to harness the power within her grasp and fight for the safety of those she held dear. How laughable! He shouldn't have told me about it if he thought it was useless. Adeline's words, tinged with a hint of self-deprecation, echoed through the stillness of the moment. Uncertain whether she spoke in jest or in earnest, she grappled with the conflicting emotions swirling within her. Pushing aside her doubts and insecurities, Adeline closed her eyes, allowing herself to be consumed by a singular focus. With unwavering concentration, she visualized the siren in her mind's eye her thoughts crystallizing around the intricate details of its form. She recalled the fundamentals of stone magic, her mind a whirlwind of incantations and imagery as she sought to harness its formidable power. As she raised the magic stone before her, Adeline's determination burned brightly within her, a beacon of resolve amidst the encroaching darkness. With practiced precision, she summoned forth the elemental energies, shaping them with her will into a potent manifestation of fire. With each word spoken, the magic stone pulsed with renewed vigor, its surface aglow with the promise of untold power. Fire should be good, she declared, her voice resolute as she unleashed the full force of her magic upon the siren. With a blinding flash, a torrent of searing flames erupted forth from the stone, tearing through the water with a fierce intensity. IT would be better if it was sturdy and sharp enough, Adeline continued her words infused with determination as she honed the magic to her will. In an instant, the flames took on a razor-sharp quality, their edges gleaming with a deadly precision. As the magical fire surged towards the siren's tendrils, Adeline's heart raced with anticipation, her every thought focused on the task at hand. In that pivotal moment, she embraced the full extent of her power, a testament to her unwavering resolve to protect those she held dear. Ben Zark stood at the ship's flagpole, surveying the situation with a critical eye. Things appeared to be stable for now, though his primary concern was Wacken's safety. Having managed to sever one of the siren's tentacles, Ben Zark knew his next imperative was to swiftly reach Wacken and shield him from the siren's grasp. However, his focus was abruptly shattered as he turned to find Wacken in imminent danger. At a distance behind Wacken, a volley of fire arrows arched through the air, hurtling towards the siren with alarming speed. Ben Zark was taken aback, struggling to comprehend the source of this sudden onslaught. Even as the siren's tentacles continued to writhe menacingly around Wacken, Ben Zark found himself grappling with the mystery. Who had conjured these fiery projectiles? Was it Wacken, attempting to fend off the siren's advance, or perhaps the siren itself, employing some arcane defense mechanism? Never once did he entertain the notion that Adeline could be behind this unexpected assault. His musings were abruptly interrupted by Wacken's strained voice piercing through the chaos. Captain, I can't hold on much longer. Wacken's cry rang out, filled with urgency and desperation. With each passing moment, the siren's grip tightened around him, threatening to crush him under its relentless pressure. Ben Zark snapped back to attention acutely aware of the peril Wacken faced. Considering the trajectory of the fire arrows, he knew Wacken was in imminent danger. The urgency of the situation galvanized him into action, propelling him into a race against time to rescue Wacken from the siren's clutches before it was too late. With a swift and determined leap, Ben Zark surged towards the spot where Wacken was ensnared by the siren's grasp. In a stroke of fortune, the volley of fire arrows pierced through the very tentacle that held Wacken captive. As Wacken teetered on the brink of peril, Ben Zark sprang into action, intercepting his descent with a well-timed maneuver, 
snatching him from the clutches of both the siren and the fiery onslaught. In a seamless motion, Benzark's swift reflexes came to the fore as he shielded both himself and Wacken from harm. Just before they could plummet to the ground, Benzark conjured a protective magical barrier, enveloping the area beneath them. His eyes alight with a radiant blue aura, Benzark wove his magic into the shield, ensuring their safe landing with a grace born of both skill and instinct. As they touched down upon the secure platform, Benzark lowered himself to one knee, his gaze unwavering even as Wacken struggled to regain his composure. Wacken's breathless gratitude spilled forth, his words tumbling out in a rush of relief and indebtedness. Captain, you saved me! I owe you a debt of gratitude for your timely intervention. Wacken gasped, his voice strained with emotion as he attempted to convey his profound thanks to Benzark. But before Wacken could fully express his appreciation, Benzark interjected, his own demeanor composed and focused. Wacken, go to Adeline right now. Benzark's command echoed, his gaze fixed ahead, squarely on the siren. Though Wacken couldn't see Benzark's face, he understood the gravity of the situation. The fiery sparks from the arrows showered around them, casting an eerie orange glow over the scene, illuminating the chaos unfolding. Realization dawned on Wacken as he comprehended Benzark's intention to safeguard Adeline amidst the turmoil. With a sense of urgency gripping him, Wacken rose to his feet, his surroundings tinged with a burgeoning purple hue, signaling the surge of magical energy enveloping them. Despite the imminent danger, Adeline remained eerily composed, her gaze fixed on the mesmerizing purple sky. Wacken's concern propelled him into action, his voice ringing out in warning as he dashed towards her with a combination of magic and determination fueled by a growing sense of frustration at the impending threat. Meanwhile, Adeline stood resolute, clutching the stone close to her chest, her lips moving in incantations as she wielded her own brand of magic. A frustrated mutter escaped her lips as she unleashed her power, compelling those around her to succumb to a deep slumber with a wave of her hand. As Wacken reached her side, the shocking realization dawned upon him. Adeline herself posed the danger, wielding magic with a potency that left him momentarily frozen in disbelief. Casting a bewildered glance at Adeline and then back at the crew, now scattered in unconsciousness, Wacken struggled to reconcile the unexpected turn of events. Benzerk's expression remained inscrutable, his silence speaking volumes as he grappled with the unfolding revelation. In that moment, the once clear lines between ally and adversary blurred, leaving them all to confront the unsettling truth of their newfound predicament. Wacken, what happened? He stuttered, attempting to make sense of the unfolding situation. Adeline, her attention drawn away from the sleeping crew, turned towards him, her features softening at the sight of him. A smile spread across her face, genuine relief evident in her expression. Oh, Wacken, you're safe, she exclaimed her joy palpable as she approached him. Thanks to the captain, I'm fine. But what's happening here? Wacken queried, still struggling to grasp the events unfolding around him. I simply put them to sleep with the magic stone I had prepared. Adeline explained calmly, her demeanor unaffected by the chaos surrounding them. I thought you just smacked them, though. Wacken retorted sarcastically, gesturing towards the slumbering crew scattered across the ship's deck. Well, it just happened while I was swinging it around, unsure of how to use it. But I succeeded in the end. Adeline grinned, though Wacken couldn't shake the suspicion that she wasn't being entirely truthful. Despite her apparent deception, he understood she acted with their best interests at heart. Lost in his own thoughts, Wacken pondered the possibility of a magic stone capable of thwarting the siren's influence, his nervous gestures betraying his unease. By the way, considering you returned alone, Ray must have sent you, right? Adeline inquired casually, though her nonchalant demeanor belied the underlying curiosity about Ray's involvement. Yes, Captain Dash. Blacken began, his response cut short by the weight of unspoken implications hanging in the air, as the mysteries surrounding Ray's motives loomed large over them all. He said, his words stumbling over one another, as he remained lost in contemplation. Suddenly, 
A resounding thud reverberated from beneath the water's surface, causing it to surge upwards, cascading over the ship in a deluge of spray. Adeline's gaze snapped towards the source of the disturbance, her mind racing as the realization dawned upon her. She had forgotten about the bomb. Who H? Wacken gasped, his eyes widening in astonishment at the unfolding spectacle. As the fragments of the rocky surface, housing the concealed bomb, hurtled towards them propelled by the force of the water and the explosive pressure, panic threatened to overwhelm them all. But Adeline remained resolute, her focus laser sharp as she summoned her magic, uncertain of its efficacy but determined to act nonetheless. Miraculously, her efforts bore fruit as she erected a protective barrier around the ship, shielding them from impending disaster. Is that a barrier on the ceiling? Did the captain cast it while fighting? Wacken pondered aloud, his gaze fixated on the shimmering shield that repelled the incoming onslaught of rock fragments, preventing catastrophe. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ship, as the bomb detonated, the siren emerged from the depths in its full, terrifying glory. With a half-female, half-octopus form, adorned with dark purple tendrils and fiery red eyes, its visage struck fear into the hearts of all who beheld it. Yet, undaunted, Ben Zark stood firm behind the protective barrier he had conjured, his gaze locked with the sirens in a silent battle of wills. Wacken! Adeline's voice pierced through his reverie, drawing him back to the present moment. Turning towards her, he found reassurance in her smile, her words offering solace amidst the chaos. We'll be safe here, so you should go to Ray already. She urged him gently, assuring him of her ability to safeguard the ship and its occupants. Her selflessness touched him deeply, yet he hesitated, torn between his duty to Ben's Ark and his desire to ensure Adeline's safety. Adeline, leaving you here alone would be. Wacken began, his voice tinged with concern as he grappled with the weight of his decision. He couldn't shake the feeling of responsibility towards her, knowing that Ben Zark had entrusted him with her protection. Wacken, I'm not weak. Trust in how useful I've been so far. Adeline interjected, her words imbued with a quiet strength that belied her diminutive stature. In that moment, Wacken found himself reassured by her unwavering resolve, knowing that she possessed the resilience and resourcefulness to weather whatever trials lay ahead. She said while putting a lot of pressure on each word. She was definitely sure about it. Fearless and resolute, she sought peace for all aboard. Confident in her ability to manage the crew, Adeline urged Wacken to assist her husband, facing the siren alone, in a calm tone. Adeline, your usefulness isn't everything to us, because you are our family. I believe in you, Adeline, he conceded, unable to refute her request. His reassurance bolstered her confidence, and Adeline's expression softened with gratitude at his unexpected vote of confidence. Please be careful while I go to the captain. He smiled, his words a gentle reminder for her to take care of herself as well. With a nod of acknowledgement, he retrieved his sword from the floor, bidding her farewell with a raised hand. As he departed, Adeline couldn't help but find solace in his calming words, though she couldn't shake the longing to hear such reassurances from her husband, Ben Zark. Finally reaching Ben Zark's side amidst the gathering storm, Wacken's arrival coincided with the darkening clouds and the ominous flicker of lightning in the sky. Captain? I came to help. Wacken announced with a grin, his enthusiasm palpable. However, Benzark's reaction was one of surprise tinged with irritation. Wacken? You? What about Adeline? Benzark's tone betrayed his frustration, his expression hardening at Wacken's apparent disregard for Adeline's safety. We don't need to worry about Adeline. Wacken responded calmly, his confidence unwavering. How do you know that? Ben Zark interjected abruptly, his skepticism evident as Wacken ground his teeth, grappling with the challenge of conveying his newfound conviction to his captain. Seriously, please. I didn't want to interfere with the captain's business, but... Try trusting in Adeline, seriously. She might even end up running away at this rate. Wacken's outburst reverberated through the rain-soaked air, his frustration boiling over as he confronted his captain. Ben Zark drenched and bewildered, 
regarded him with a mixture of confusion and irritation, struggling to grasp the urgency of Wacken's plea. What are you talking about? Ben Zark demanded, his voice tinged with anger as the siren's menacing presence loomed ever closer. Let's save the talking for later. We should finish this one off for now. Wacken exclaimed, his excitement palpable as he brandished his magical sword, poised for battle. With a predatory gleam in his eye, he lunged towards the advancing siren, his determination unwavering. Hey, have you ever been hit by a holy sword? It's going to hurt quite a lot. Wacken taunted, his blade ablaze with magical energy. With lightning speed, he darted past the siren, delivering a swift and decisive blow that cleaved through its left arm, sending it tumbling into the depths below. The siren recoiled in shock, clutching its wounded stump as the surrounding rocks crumbled under the force of its thrashing. Bounding to a higher vantage point, Wacken leveled a determined gaze at Ben's arc, urgency blazing in his eyes. Captain? Do it right now! He shouted, signaling to Ben Zark to seize the opportunity and strike while the siren was vulnerable. I know! I know! Ben Zark said with complete concentration and lifted his sword to his eyes and started awakening it with magic. Suddenly he felt something. Something really strong. A presence of strong magic. He stopped as he felt it. What was that? He could feel a presence from somewhere. On the other side Adeline was completely concentrated on the magic stone holding it in her hands with her eyes closed. What was this? The feeling of magic? Ben Zark wondered. He could still feel it. Soon he realized from where he felt it. He saw Adeline standing with the crushed magic stone which was crushed but hanging still in air above her hand. Purple and pink magic light were surrounding her as she was deeply immersed in the spell. Adele. He whispered unbelievably. He saw her muttering something. The siren also looked towards her worriedly and fearly. Suddenly it came, the fire which was strong enough to pierce through anything and that magical fire pierced through the siren brining it completely. In no time the siren was all burned with no sign left behind. There was only black smoke rising from the place where the siren burned. The smoke continued rising until it disappeared completely. With that the sun came out again and the scene was now completely bright again. It was a bright and sunny day with clouds again. The rain stopped. Adeline hold the walls of the ship and looked towards the site where Benzark and Wacken were standing surprisingly. She shouted and cheered happily as she looked at them. We. We won. Wacken Ray. She shouted happily and joyously. Wacken waved his hand back with a great smile while Ben Zark was seeing her with dark expressions. He was unable to understand this girl. Adele, you, what on earth? He thought in his heart as he looked at her with squinted eyes. The sword he was holding was now red from the core. 